Welcome to the October 28th, 2021 meeting of the Risk Working Group for the Chaos Project. Um, the links to the minutes are shared in the chat and I can also share them here so that we are able to see them together. Um, the things that I thought we might begin just with a brief review uh, for those who weren't here last time. So at, at the, the OSS Summit North America during the risk talk, there was some discussion of Libyers versus what some OSPOs called uh, technical debt and how they measure that. And that some discussion of the, the name itself can be confusing and um, it's not really technical debt um, because the way the technical debt's been evaluated was has been sort of the cumulative age of all the dependencies and the dates of calculation are somewhat different than we chose to use with Libyer, it, uh, it, and which is a little bit different. So in some ways it's easier to implement than Libyer. That was the pro because with Libyers we're doing a calculation between the most recent release and uh, the release that a project is on. So obviously we always have to maintain a knowledge of the most recent release as well as the delta between those dates and the previous release or the release that a project is using. And it also, it does also enable noting older software that might, no, might not be maintained any longer. So it has, it has an advantage of making, you know, if your most current release is five years old, it could, it could very well be the case that that software is not being maintained and that's a bad thing. And Libyers wouldn't show you that information um, that, that the, the dependency had stopped getting maintained. Um, and then you can see the cons are, well, that would penalize like old stable software that really didn't need an update. Um, and the number, the other thing is the number is slowly changing regardless of um, releases. Uh, so David, do you, would you like to comment further? Uh, you had some strong feelings about technical debt as a term and that what that is, is something different than sometimes how that term is used. You're, you're muted, David. You know, that's, it was the it was the uh, catchphrase of 2020, oh. and it's the catchphrase of 2021. Uh, you're muted. <laughs> you're muted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, as and in fact, we have a recording of this. Uh, so I, I am not excited about this particular measure. I mean, there's pros and cons to everything. There's no perfect measure, but I, I really I don't like the term, and I don't think this is a great measure. But as far as the term goes, the term technical debt actually has a meaning. And it uh, is it is basically from the firm word debt, and implying that your debt on tech on technology is just like a debt on a house, you have to take on some debt in order to get something now as opposed to many years from now. But as a side effect, there are some problems that you inherit and you can either pay them down like you would a house or let the interest gather and it festers until it becomes impossible to pay off right um so you know thinking about housing or credit card debt is the model so this doesn't seem like the right way to talk about that because if i'm using something that was released a while ago but that's the current version uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. On the other hand, if it's relatively recent, but it's behind, I should get penalized for that. I I tend to agree. I mean, I was thinking about technical debt. I agree with that analogy, David. And I feel like I've heard it a lot used in the context of just implied work or work that you are either putting off or you're dressing and investing in up front and right. knowing that you're taking it on means you're going to have to do it later and it's going to continue to be a bigger problem as other things change around it but that in, for me i usually look at it as an integration problem just how much work do you need to do to make something work well versus how many band-aids are you applying that you need to refactor later um and 
age but, but, is not actually the, the like that's not actually maybe the biggest factor it's all contextually driven like if you're using an older version because all the things you're using around it are compatible with the older version then you're incurring less i don't know like it's it's, it's not necessarily a time-based or time-related issue as I mentioned earlier, there are no perfect measures. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the problem here. Um, by the way, I just I, I need. Um, let's see, probably I ought to just post this in. But the um, uh, you know, I'm going to post this right here. Uh, the phrase technical debt. It, there's actually a Wikipedia entry. This is a standard computer terminology term. It has a meaning, and it doesn't mean what this thing measures. So I'm. I'm I, <laughs> I'm curious if it's really a measurable thing or if it's more of a heuristic, like, can it actually ever be a metric or is it more of a heuristic assessment of a number of not completely quantifiable things? Uh, I think it's, it's subjective, isn't it? Like, I think it would be hard to measure. I hate to say something can't be measured. Yeah, uh, can't I, is hard. <laughs> don't wanna, I, I, yeah, I don't want to put those words in your mouth. Then yeah, uh, there, there, there's a, there's a long list of things that we don't know how to do right now. But that doesn't. That's a totally different statement. To, I mean, I I did a PhD dissertation on a on a on something that everyone agreed couldn't be done. So uh, I, I I'm. I, I'm very hesitant to use can't, but I, I think it is it is fair to say that we don't have a very good idea on how to measure technical debt um, today. Uh, the, you know, I, the, I the notion this. is that we take an easy solution now and have a better solution that would take longer. And the problem here is, you know, if if you start with the short term right. solution and then slowly move towards it and pay it off, you're fine. Right. If you right. take the short-term solution and then you base everything else on this thing that you know has serious limitations that are going to bite you later, then you'll get bit and hard. So, you know, but, uh, but yeah, so I don't know. I, I would say yeah. I don't know anybody who knows exactly how to manage. Now, there is a paper uh, I, by Eric Altman on how to manage it, but I think I, that's different than measuring it. Yeah, I, I look at this list on Wikipedia. Um, of common causes, and many of these do seem as though there are things that we can measure, um, or we could measure if we wanted to take on such a. I mean, I, I think it's 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 difficult to measure, but we could provide some guidance at some point if we chose to. Also, just I mean, some of them are written funny. So I'm just judging the lack of knowledge described by yeah. the developer doesn't know how to write elegant code. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you could just well, it be a lack of knowledge. Yeah, it may not be lack of knowledge. It may be lack of time. Elegant short code sometimes often takes longer uh, than, than, than the quick spit out. Uh, just like elegant writing often takes more work too. Yeah. And for the same reasons. <laughs> and elegant doesn't necessarily imply efficient. Uh, right. Um, yeah, I, I, I think really the broader issue is best fit for purpose or something like that. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's, I mean, there's an AC, there's a paper published in the communications of the ACM uh, specifically talking about this term. Um, referencing the Ward Cunningham report from 1992, um, where he says shipping first time code is like going into debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you're, I you're, mean, you're, these, you're... these words have meanings, and it's not what this is measuring at all. That's the problem. That, right. That's the problem with the phrase. So okay. but what, mm -hmm. then we what, then what we talked about is, hey, is this an okay measure if we just renamed it? And I think I think renaming it, we um, I, uh, let's see here, right here we talked about that uh, it, that alternate name. I mean, it's better with, with a clear name, but it still has problems. <laughs> uh, yeah. There is a document where we have written something on this metric. It, it's in our in the meeting notes. Yeah. Um, do it's you have a October fourteen meeting notes? Um, uh, just keep uh, yeah. in the chaos working group. Uh, it, do we, you know what? Let me post the link again. Do, do you have a link to the, do you, what was the name of the author that wrote a paper about it? 
Oh, um, let's see here. It's called Managing Technical Debt. If you are an ACM member, and I am, you can get it for I free. I am too, yeah. Okay, so you can get direct access to that. Um, if you are if if you are a part of a most universities, you can probably also get that if you're a member of because they typically have a way to get these. I mean, CACM is one of the is you know one of the top journals period in in computing. So if it's there, it's uh, a lot of people read it. Yeah, it's it's uh, appear, it appears to be in their. Um... I don't know. I might be logged into ACM right now, but it seems to be um, not behind a paywall. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I, I it was for me until I logged in. So, but that's fine. And and, and it may be that I am logged in. Um, yeah. So this article is from the CACM. You know, I'm just going to copy and paste the link into our notes. I I just did that. I think. Ooh, yes, you did. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, but that's. Can can any can, Sophia? Can you click on that link and and get to it? So I, I put it on I put it on our list of things that perhaps we uh, consider in the future for the moment. I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm hesitant to take this. Yeah, I don't really want to on until we have a like. I, I mean, I think there there is a specific definition, but there's also a lot of variety. Like yeah, it's, a, it, it's more of a like a related term that gets used in a lot of contexts. Like I think I might have brought this up before we even had this conversation because I wasn't there two weeks ago, but we use the term all the time to talk about a broader variety of similar issues that mm -hmm. were just sort of the, the amount of debt you're incurring by adopting a solution that doesn't necessarily have to apply to software development. So using in the context of say infrastructure selection, that kind of implies that you're taking on something that you're gonna deal with later or that you're inheriting something that wasn't dealt with before. Right, um, right. Either choosing to invest in refactoring or choosing to know that you'll have to do it later and you're assuming the risk that something might break and you'll be forced to do it earlier so it's sort of like it can generally be used in sort of those broader discussions not necessarily specifically about software development tasks which the definition tends to focus a bit more on software um yeah so i, I don't know i think it's because of that variety interpretation even if we did choose to say we're talking about it in this context and this is how we're defining it I don't know how useful that is if everyone finds the terminology more useful to talk about in their own context. Right. Yeah. How's this? Uh, it doesn't sound like we're, I mean, it doesn't sound we're likely to use this. Yeah, we're not likely to work on this now. So why don't we just push this off? Yeah. Maybe someday we'll come back to it. Let's focus right. on things we actually Agreed. care about. And we yeah. just lost somebody? I think when I dropped off, but he's coming back. Yes, there he is. Ah, um, we missed you. Didn't like technical debt either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Zoom 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 debt is now also a thing, apparently. 
Um, right, so, so yeah, do we, I, do we have anything else that we want to be working on as far so, as? That's good. Good question. So the the that's a couple items on the agenda. One, um, you know, next metrics. We have our spreadsheet okay. of of things that we were talking about working on next. Um, dependency, sustainability, risk. Um, uh, depend some, something like dependency range, which could be a filter on lib years. Um, there's of course the ultimately the um, downstream dependencies uh, are, are are a thing. One one thought that I had though was that when I started thinking about um, the met, we we discussed a metric called. Um, dependency sustainability risk. Um, and when, when, we, when I started thinking about it, I thought it might look a little bit like what we've been starting to call metrics model. In other words, dependency sustainability risk isn't something that I think would be a single metric. I think it might require perspectives that are offered by a number of existing metrics, which is how we're, how we're starting to define uh, these metrics models. So I actually, apparently, I this is not the alert. This is not the correct link. Hold on. Dependency sustainability risk. Wait. So I I don't know. Maybe this is the the chicken and egg problem, but. The way that it's written implies that there's an agreed upon definition of sustainability that might be coming from another working group. And that if there is, then dependency sustainability risk was just borrowing the same definition instead of measurement, and then enumerating that across your dependencies as the implementation. Yeah, so we, we actually came up with dependency sustainability risk on our own, I think. Unless this got put into the MVM tab. No, no, I'm not saying that we, we didn't, because I do remember that being here, but it's more that our, there are other working groups that are talking about sustainability, because I wouldn't want to define sustainability differently between working groups. And I feel like that That's might true. be a topic that has come up in other groups. I think, yeah, I think, I think sustainability is certainly a topic that's come up in the, the many different metrics discussions. Um, the, so what I took a stab at was focusing on dependency sustainability as a particular concern uh, with the idea that, okay, I have some set of projects, either as a community manager or an OSPO director, where I want to understand which of my dependencies have some level of sustainability risk or how to rank that sustainability risk. And if I was, and so in my head, where this comes from is I was thinking, well, Libiers would be a great place to start. And I think upstream code dependencies would give me that list of projects that I need to get more information about. And then I was thinking things like bus factor, elephant factor, um, contributor activity, how, how long change your, and these are just like, I'm throwing darts at the wall here. These metrics are things where if I had 11 core dependencies for my project, I would, if I was trying to evaluate the sustainability of each of those dependencies, I would look at these existing chaos metrics to, to get a picture uh, of that. but it's just an idea and you're free to hate it. I, I, I feel a little overwhelmed. I'm not sure I understand your, your, your bottom line proposal here. So, so um, back, backing up uh, in, within, the pro, within the chaos project, we've started to take a look at how OSPOs are, are using the metrics that we do have. And almost always they're combining uh, some set of the metrics into a single analysis. 
that right. gives them a, a picture of, of their project. They're generally not looking at the dependencies when they're trying to evaluate the sustainability of the project or the, its health uh, or the responsiveness of the community. They're looking at other things, although some of those things are represented here. The dependency sustainability risk metric model or sort of a way that somebody might operationalize trying to assess the risk that they have around dependencies probably involves first they know what they are then they know the libyers but there are other factors that might give them a signal about the long and short term likelihood of the project remaining healthy and so the i don't know the idea i'm throwing out i won't even call it a suggestion but just an idea that we can discuss and then decide not to act on today is, is that we have a metrics model around this idea of uh, dependency sustainability. Okay, some sort of, I'm going to do a bunch of analysis of each of my dependencies and then score it overall. Right, right. So it's a, uh, yeah. So I guess the part that I'm struggling with is why would, is there a notable difference in how you would measure a sustainability of a dependency versus sustainability of a project itself? I think I think aside from Libyer and enumerating your dependencies, no. I, I don't think so. However, there is a scale problem. Um, you know, if, if you measure a whole bunch of factors across, say, well, with the, the average application uh, reported by, let's see, the synopsis or sonotype, my apologies, I can't remember which one, was 528. The average so, number of dependencies? Yes. Okay. So, if, you know, the, if the average app has 528, I think that's the right number of dependencies, which means some have more because that's the average. That's how averages work, right? Mm -hmm. Um you know, and you start combining data from all of those. I mean, if you look for the worst case, I'm sure you can find a worst case no matter what you do, right? Yeah. Um, and if you do an average, um, I wouldn't be surprised if if the average just overwhelm and you wouldn't find what was important. You know, if you if you average the sea level, you don't discover that there's flooding in someone's basement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, you, you care about specific cases, not really the average. So yeah. I, how's this? Um, that doesn't make it wrong. It's just given those statements, how can we make sure that the resulting metric is useful? <laughs> I, so in unstated here is, is probably that you know, whatever we would say is a, a measure of sustainability for dependencies that we care about. And if it's 500 on average, that doesn't surprise me as much as I thought it did. It's a way of looking at perhaps where you have your top, your top end uh, dependencies of concern along each of these metrics. And if you have a project that's in the top end for a number of them, then you have a, a bit of insight into where to focus your attention. Ah, okay. H how's this? How about averaged Z scores? And, I'm, and now if you're going to look at me funny, because you probably no, I know, I know, I know Z score. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, Z score is basically a way of taking a very wide range and compressing it into like a zero to one. Yeah. No, no, it, well, it's, it, well, no, no, zero, 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 it, it's, well, no, it's actually infinity in both directions, although you'll never see yeah. that. But basically, plus one to minus one is going to cover 68%. And plus minus yes. two to plus two is going to cover 95%. 97%. Well, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> 97? I thought it was 95. Mm. Anyway. Okay, okay, yeah. Maybe I, I might go ahead and confuse, yeah. Uh, it's, it's bit... Uh, it's been a little while since I took my probability class. I mean, I, I'm saying approximates anyway, because of course you actually, I mean, this is actually- a, Oh, a, a I see, it's based on a normal distribution. That yes. That's right. Uh, yes. 
And and you can argue, well, wait a minute, is it necessarily a normal distribution? Well, maybe not, but normal distribution is usually close enough. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's tailed, so it can't be, strictly speaking, a normal distribution. You, you can't have negative numbers of contributors, for example, uh, last I checked. <laughs> Although I, yeah. I, I have met some people who are in the running for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, it would be better if you weren't around. Um, so, but, but I think if you took the Z-scores and, you know, a, and then averaged those, then you'd be able to answer, hey, most of the stuff I'm depending on is way worse than normal. So the Z, what would we Z-score? Everything? Ideally everything, or at least within an ecosystem. I, I suspect it'd be safe to do it within an ecosystem. So for example, all the JavaScript programs, uh, packages um, that are on NPM. or all the PyPI packages. So can I ask a question? Yeah. So like, uh, suppose in this model, we have these bunch of these metrics. Should we convert all these metrics to a Z-score and then see the comparison? Or like, I'm trying to assess uh, what we are getting from this. All right, okay. Here, here's what I'm here's what I'm trying to do. I posed the question earlier. Just averaging doesn't tell me very much. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So, but if I average Z scores and uh, where, well, where my Z scores is, how well is this project doing compared to everybody else within that ecosystem? If I found out that most of my dependencies are significantly were on, on average, my dependencies are worse than average. I should worry, right? Right. On the other hand, if my dependencies on average are way better, then I'm less worried. Now I might ask, which are the outliers, the ones that are worse off? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I, I would I, ask about. And I think in my mind, I wasn't thinking about averaging them across all the dependencies as much as I was thinking about using this kind of a strategy. And Z scores would would do a nice job of normalizing the comparisons, so that I that I could find the things to I could have a richer set of metrics you, that I'm using to identify projects that I could poss I should possibly be concerned about. Right, um, now that ideally, are on. ideally to get a Z-score, you would do those measurements across the entire population. But if right. you can't, you can do a sample, which is, by the way, <laughs> what most of stats is all about is yeah. snagging samples and then coming up with values like the Z-scores. So uh, I'm not saying it's trivial because that means that somebody has to do the work to gather the data to find out where how the curves work so you can identify where a particular project is in its scoring. But it, it's it, it's not an impossible. It, it's a uh, I got to automate gathering the data and calling up the routines to calculate z-scores. <laughs> you know you don't you don't guess, have to create yeah. a library to do that, huh? I guess the challenge that I have with, now I don't have an issue with the Z-score. I'm just, I'm stuck on the metrics model because I feel like there's some things that will not be ubiquitous measures across projects in terms of, I, I guess maybe because this issue is front and center for me today, uh, there is <laughs> a popular project that is not working um, and it's one of those things that there's a single maintainer who has been kind of not really progressing the project, but is somewhat responsive. And so this, yeah. now that there's a huge ecosystem dependent on this project for active things that people use refer to in both corporations as well as in the community, there's sort of this, there's, there's a high level of like, it's not working and that's starting to like rise of like red flags and everything, but there's no SLO around the project. There's a single maintainer who hasn't necessarily set any expectations around how reactive he's going to be, how available he's going to be to accept other kinds of contributions. One of those things where it's like, that's just the, the state of the project. And so right. I'm, I don't know, I guess right now I'm kind of concerned with say putting a, a metric on something when 
there is no concept of agreed SLOs in open source. Right. So if something uh, and, and, like and, and and more than that, can they fix it? <laughs> do they want to fix it? Do they care about fixing it? Like right. yeah, um, right. And the same for issue response time. By the way, yeah. um, for the projects I maintain, uh, we have a policy of not closing unless we have decided not to do it. It's perfectly okay to have an issue sit for five years. Yeah, we might get around to it. That's okay. I, I so measuring response time when if the if it's an issue that is a bug, I think bug response time is reasonable. But issue response time, if that includes feature requests, goodness gracious, that's an infinite. You know, the the number of possible ideas is infinite. Mm -hmm. So counting up, this is basically another way to saying, can you count all ideas? Uh, tell me how long it takes to implement all ideas. Could take a so, while. <laughs> so, so if I'm reading, if I'm reading the, the Zoom here, I think I think this is an idea to say that we've talked about it and let it let it gestate for a little bit. It's not something we should jump in and work on right now. Well, I don't know. I feel like a metrics model for project sustainability, and then figuring out how to implement that in terms of dependency analysis. I think the hardest part is defining the metrics model for sustainability. And I, I'm open to working on that. I think the only caveat again is what I raised earlier is are there others that are already working on this? Because it seems like a thing that would be more pervasive beyond just the risk working group. What I feel is that word sustainability is more broader. We might narrow it down to the risk aspect of that because sustainability is not only the risk aspect, it is, it, it is more broader. Uh, that's what I feel. So maybe thinking and okay. bringing it, narrowing it to a focus area like risk aspect, which can include dependency, Libya, or some other things. But I don't know. I, I feel sustainability is too broad. We should narrow it a little bit to bring it to the. What about, of, I, I agree with you, Vinod. What about something like availability, which also has very specific connotations coming from the data center world? <laughs> or any service world, but so what would be the what is the di difference between availability? I mean, avail I guess I know what availability means on the surface, but I don't know what it does. Means it in the... does it work? Uh, <laughs> is, it, is it working? Is it not working? So it's a little bit more of a, a binary versus sustainability. There's so many other factors that could look at. I guess yeah. So I guess maybe. The sustainability risk is more like whether or not it could become unavailable or become something that you can no longer rely on. But I agree with Vinod. I think sustainability is very large. So finding a way to bring this in scope for what really matters in the context of dependencies. Because if you're the community leader on one of these projects, then sustainability for you is going to mean more than just does this thing work and can someone fix it if it breaks? Whereas if you're depending on it, then your interest in the project is more on the thing itself and the thing as a tool versus is the community thriving and growing and evolving or however, whatever things that they have in their own goals or goals for the project. So if I'm hearing the problem that you were describing earlier correctly, there's some dependency that is used in a very large project that no longer works. It's currently broken, yes. And so, so is there a metric? Is is there a way to even know other than people noticing their stops, their software stops building that it doesn't work, and is that is that a like a metric? I think, like, how do I express that in a way that are are there precursors to something breaking in that way? I mean, that seems like a fairly significant, like either mistake on the part of the person responsible or um, wait, 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 okay. Uh, I guess being I guess, able to rebuild is that the statement? Well, this this is this is actually a weird case because it's it's a pipeline tool, so it's just you're you're not able to build your build with it. But in this case, I don't think it was a mistake. I think it was just 
for lack of a better word, neglect, like the project hasn't evolved. And I think eventually if something doesn't continue to evolve, it will break down when everything around it has made it obsolete, which I, that's my hypothesis as to what's happened without actually looking at the code base and understanding what's not running or not working. But mm -hmm. we kind of knew this was a possibility because it wasn't actively being maintained. It was, has an owner, right. but the owner is just somewhat responsive and just isn't necessarily progressing it. I don't know. I guess maybe I'm, my experience is colored because this is like our, again, our, no. our fire today. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that, and that fire, you know, people were aware of it some version of metrics, whether they're chaos metrics or heuristic implementations of chaos metrics, there was an awareness that there was a ambivalent bus factor of one and that something could potentially go wrong. It's not like you were, nobody was surprised that this eventually happened, but when it happened today, it sucks. I mean, there's another way we could measure, which is how many of your dependencies have a bus factor of one? I mean, I think that's a measure unto itself. Right. And by the way, the answer is way more than you like. Yeah. Uh, but but then but then but then I, I have to I, I have to admit, you know, the okay. Then what do you do? I mean, hopefully, maybe maybe if the answer is okay, I'm going to get involved in some of these projects. Well, okay, that's that would be the awesome answer. Uh, I mean, one of the alternatives is I will stop using React because it depends on, it has many dependencies and almost certainly many of them are single person projects. Um, but it's also like, does the person maintaining it even want other maintainers? Like or need maybe them. Maybe they don't. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those things, so I, this is a funny one where I think people want to help, but like there's no model to help because it's just a single maintainer. That maintainer's not really into taking pull requests and doing anything with them. Yeah, and, and this actually kind of res, um, is one of the challenges with some of our repos, which is it's very, very hard to say, I used to depend on project blah. I now want to, 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 to check. I want to depend on blah fork. But you really have to convince the user of blah to switch in each case which you often can't do. I think that's a sneaky related thing. Like in, in terms of, I guess maybe it wouldn't fit in this metric, but sort of the like, so we've come up with all of these indicators. Or we'll say we come up with all these indicators around whether or not you can still continue to rely on something or it's becoming increasingly risky to rely on something. Right. Then the decision and process to change it, I think, is it's a it's all its own headache. <laughs> I don't know if that's something that we take on, but I think it it should be part of the risk equation because I think that's always sort of the the risk to switch versus the risk to chance it. I don't want to bring up technical debt again, but I think that's definitely part of it. <laughs> If you mean by technical debt, the broader issue, I mean, I, I agree it's an issue. The, the challenge has always been measuring it. Yeah. Yeah. But by the way, Z-score apparently has been renamed by at least some people to standard score. I saw uh, that too. Which yeah. I, I guess makes sense since it's referring to the standard deviation, though obviously the, the problem is neither the standard deviation nor the so-called standard score actually always apply in all distribution models, but oh well, <laughs> I didn't yeah. make this name up. <laughs> so this 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 came about because obviously those the work on metrics models taking place, but also when I was trying to think about what is dependency sustainability risk, it, it didn't feel like a discrete single thing that we could measure um like with one metric uh, and I, I so to sum, summarizing some of what we've talked about at the bottom under implementation maybe it's we run the upstream code dependencies and then for that enumerated list 
We calculate lib years, bus factor, elephant factor, and license coverage, z-score it, and then provide a list of those dependencies that have some, a z-score below some threshold. Like maybe that's that's the dependency sustainability risk model. So at least, so there sounds like this one that is causing you pain today, Sophia, was folks were generally aware of it. I suspect there are others that folks are not generally aware of, of holding these problems. And so this consolidation of metrics potentially is helpful, but potentially is not. Well, with the, the idea of a metrics model, wouldn't wouldn't it also be sort of a self selection in terms of knowing which things are more or less important to you? Like there might be another consideration that mm -hmm. they would want to include in it. So this is just an example of how you might build your own set of related metrics that are important to you in monitoring your dependencies. This is one method to consolidate it and give you a real number to work with and look for outliers, which is you're trying to find your biggest risks, essentially. So yeah, yes, yes. This is not inclusive, like not inclusive of all. This is like one approach yeah. to look at the problem. And, and they and like user can contextualize in their own different situations, maybe add or remove these more of a metrics. Yeah, I would, yep. I would, so uh, the way I phrase that just as I was typing here is I look at, so like Libya bus factor, elephant factor and license coverage are, I'd say each of them are sort of blunt instruments. And if you wanna understand it more deeply, you're likely to wanna to employ metrics that are, you know, some of the other ones that were initially listed like pull request acceptance rate or speed of response or number of contributors um, that, that we have metrics that I would say are less blunt. Is that, and do we want to enumerate those or do we want to enumerate the potential ones in something like this? Are these, do we want to call these core or do we want to make them part of a menu and offer no further advice other than here's the 15 metrics that you might consider using um, and offer no further guidance beyond that. I see no value in doing that. People can do that already. No, no value so, in this entire no, enterprise or the... No, 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 no. No value in <laughs> saying, there are many things you can do. Good luck. Right. Either, either be prescriptive or... Yeah. You know, there, uh, if, if you if, if you want to say, hey, there are things you could do, you all they need to do is do Google, use Google. <laughs> they don't need us. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I mean, I think we can, I think the potential, I don't think every chaos metric is uh, potentially uh, in, enhancing or increasing the depth or granularity of understanding dependency sustainability risk. I think there's some finite no, but, but, collection. Right. But, that, but the, my point though, is that I would rather have a few things that are especially useful than a mm -hmm. long diatribe of a thousand things you could do. Uh, please don't. <laughs> if if I'm yeah. if I'm if I'm going to come as chaos, you know I'm looking for the value add is you have delved in and really nailed down the specific definitions for a couple metrics that are useful for that are useful at least for some circumstances. I I don't need the list of all things that can be measured. You know, count of E's in the source code. <laughs> We don't have a metric would, for that, but if you I want to add, David. Back in the bug versus issue response, right? Because I, I mm -hmm. agree with David. I think we do any sort of issues that could be untenable, but if it's, this is a P0 bug, it's not working for a better idea of response rate. Because it's just like, it's, everyone has their own tolerance to downtime. And if it's, it takes them an average of two weeks to resolve things, that might not be usable for your right. case, depending on what you're building. So here's the challenge. I actually do think that bug response time is a valid and useful measure. And maybe that's, in fact, I would accept that as a useful metric to be defined here.
The challenge then is actually going into and measuring it because most folks use GitHub, GitLab, um, or the, and now I, I think at least if you use Bugzilla, I think that that difference is, is there by default. But at least in GitHub, by default, there's no distinction. Yeah, the no. thing, one of the things Kate and I had been doing is looking at the tags. Yeah. Right, you can tag um, it, but mm -hmm. I would I suspect a majority of projects don't tag, and there's no standard tag. I mean, guys, there's a couple of default tags aren't now, aren't there? Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but I, yeah. I know that we arrived at a list of synonyms for some things that that had meaning at one point, and bug is uh, you know things that are defects. Bug is, I think, the most common one that I've seen. Yeah, for sure. I, there's also uh, potentially filtering just on what's described. Like if there's a stack trace of the issue, there's a pretty good chance that's a bug. <laughs> yeah. Like most of the issues here. I see that our defects have a stack trace. And we're out of time, by the way. Okay. How's this? Next time, uh, unless somebody else has something else to propose, why don't we continue the discussion focusing on uh, basically the bug response time? That I think I could get behind. It's Sophia, not new, but, but that doesn't Sophia mean. Vinod, what are your thoughts? Does that seem yeah. reasonable? Yep. I think so. I, is it interesting yeah. and worth your time is maybe a better <clears throat> way to ask the question? But are we, I think it's a valuable measure. Yes, it Sorry, is. my only question is we started with the technical depth and we left it. Are we developing that one or not? No, that is, I, I, think, think, I think not. I think no. we're leaving okay. that dead by we're leaving that dead <laughs> by the roadside. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no. it's a good thing to point to occasionally where we said we could just yeah. in that pile over there with technical debt. Yeah, it I mean like a catch all. It could be, I mean, it could be a blog post or something, but it's not going to be a metric. I mean, um, if somebody really desperately wants it, they can re-raise it and, and they can look, more importantly, they can look at our notes on our discussion of its pros and cons, which I think led to us saying, nah, we're not going to because the cons outweigh the pros. But you know what? If somebody comes back and either says, you're wrong, look at this pro that's way that you didn't consider that overwhelms or this con you can overwhelm, or, hey, if you refine it doing X, then their, pro then their big problems go away, which is great. Uh, but I, I think for now, we need to move on to some other metric. Uh, if somebody okay. has a better idea, that's great. But I, I do think that bug response time is worth doing. Because <laughs> that does, I think, legitimately describe, I, was, I mean, there's the problem that past performance does not guarantee future. But yep. if somebody never resp hasn't responded in a year to any bugs, the odds of my bug getting responded to as well is not very high. <laughs> uh, I think, do we have a metric in some of the group is issue response time? Right, I mean, that's not the same we, thing. We do, and I think, I think what we would be doing is, is taking issue response time and adding, mm -hmm. adding- Bug aspect. Or, right. or defect, defect response time, not just issues. Yeah, I think okay. that's the key. Is it's not just issues. It's okay. and I think I think a, a bag of words in the in the tags as well as in the text and things like stack traces in the issue are I think dead giveaways that those are defects. It seems like a good place to talk next time if everyone's excited yeah. about that and wants to come back to talk about it. Um, <laughs> Next meeting is on the 11th. I, I I I made a quick mathematical guess that there's three days less than it left in October, so 14 would be 11th. I didn't yeah, look. No, at you're it. right. Yeah. So the week after community summit, I believe. And I think I'll see David and Sophia there. At, at That's where the member summit? Yeah, I'll be member summit. member summit. Are they yep, calling it I, member I, summit or community summit? I member summit. Member. Okay, member. Okay. Yeah, community would be way bigger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll see. I'll okay. see two of you next week, and um, thank you. Yeah.
I will stop sharing and put the recording to an end and talk with you all soon. All right. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.